Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's dig into the, the scene that I've got set up here. For those that are interested, let's take a very quick look at the layout. So I've got a couple of scrolls and a sheet of paper that I've already modeled with a wax seal. And I'm using um, a very simple lighting setup. I've got two um, area lights here, each fairly equidistant from the other, pointing directly at the scene. And then I've got a backlight going into the um, curve of the backdrop or the psych. So let's switch over to the shading tab and I've got viewport shading enabled and I'm going to select the object that I want to apply the shader to. Now then we've got our principled shader here. I'm going to first increase the roughness to 0.95 and the transmission to 0.05 it's not much, but it's enough to allow some light through and give it that translucent look of paper. Now, the first thing that I'm going to add is a noise texture. So we press Shift A, then S, and then type noise. And we can use the arrow keys to go down and press Enter to add that. Click to set it in place. We're going to plug that into the base color of the principled shader. Now we've got a nice modeling effect going on here. I'm going to leave the scale set at 5. I'll increase the detail to 5, the roughness to 0.9 and leave the distortion to set to 0. So you can see that now gives us a much better effect already but we've got a couple of changes to do to that. We're going to add a texture coordinate and use the object output and plug that into the vector. I then want a Voronoi texture. Plug the texture coordinate into that as well. We're going to use smooth F1 as our um, feature output and Euclidean as our distance metric. The scale I'm going to put up to 54.2. It's a bit specific, but there you go. I'll leave the other two set as they are. And then I'm going to press Control Shift on my keyboard and then right click on the Voronoi texture and drag a connector up. This works if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. If you don't, you can add it through your preferences and add-ons. Just search for it and enable it. We're going to use a mix factor of 0.25 and we're going to use the Multiply Blending Mode. So you can see there we've got a nice mottling aged effect going on but I want to control the colouring that's being used as it's a bit stark white right now. I want more of this. So we are going to add a colour ramp here and another one here. We're going to change the interpolation mode of this bottom one to B-spline and move this value over to position 0.25. I'll come back and change the colors in a minute. First up I'm going to get another color ramp and plop that, actually I'll plop that there. Move these across a bit. So I've got more room. Then I'm going to get an ambient 
occlusion node. Plug the color output into the factor. Select inside and the distance to point zero 0.01. We're then going to mix that with our multiply value from before. And we're going to set that to darken. Now for this color value on the color ramp, we're going to use the hex value 7C7870. And it gives us this nice warm gray color. Then for the other color, we're going to use the hex value of FCF5E5. And that gives us a much creamier, lighter version of the one we used before. For the bottom color ramp here, for the darker value, I'm going to use hex code 898989. And that gives us a slightly cooler gray. And then for the lighter value, I'm going to use the hex code BC, BC, BC. And that's a lighter gray. And you can see how that's sort of uh, aged it a bit, taking away that stark white. Now on this color ramp, we're going to move the white value to around let's say 0.55. Now I want a bit more texture going on here, so I'm going to add another noise texture. Plug the object value into that. I'm going to plug the factor into the normal of the principal shader. And of course, to convert that data into normal, we need a bump node. And the input needs to go into the height. That's a bit too much going on right now. So we're going to drop the strength to 0.1 and the distance to 0.1 just giving us an extra little bit of texture there going on. Setting the scale to 10 and the detail to five and the roughness to one. Now let's just neaten ourselves up here. Shift equals will basically line up nodes nice and neatly. There we go, that's better. And then I'll enable the watermark that I've already created earlier. And that gives us our textured paper with a parchment style finish to it. If you're interested in any of these other bits, do let me know like how to create the scroll or the crumpled paper or the wax seal and I'll look at doing these in future tutorials. This was more about the material and the shader going on here. So just to give you an idea of what each thing is doing, let's start isolating things. So we have the original noise texture, which is giving us this sort of black and white thing going on. We add color to that using this color ramp. The Voronoi texture is giving us this these dots all over the place. Now you can play around with the scale to get sort of larger stains or whatever. Let's bring that up to there, say. Color ramp again is obviously adding color to that. And we're then mixing those two together. The ambient occlusion should be giving us some light and dark at the top and the bottom, but it's not. So let's drop that value to zero. And the color ramp is just basically um, controlling that a bit more. And then we're using those values to darken off 
the bottom and the top. So you can see how that impacts there. It basically lightens that. So as opposed to trying to use lots of lighting, we've just got um, age defects using this color ramp. And then obviously we're tying it all together with the other settings that we've got in here with the principal shader. And this noise texture obviously is giving us um, the bump data. It's not a lot, but if you look very, very closely, you can see some. So it depends how realistic you want this to be. And there we go. So let's quickly render that out. I am using the Cycles Render Engine with 256 samples. Probably doesn't need that, but uh, there is one thing that I'll point out. And in the color management uh, section, I'm using high contrast. Um, basically, when you're default loading, there's none. But you can see that it makes a nice difference to this um, particular scene. So let's quickly render that out. And there we go. A nice simple parchment shading. Um, I'd like to experiment with this in the future and get lots of different effects going on. Maybe even some burnt things or some creases. But I'll have a play and I'll release that in the future um, once I've figured that out. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe for future content. Uh, thanks for watching.